So I have this example program where we have an input box that we can type in some value into and then we compare what it is and do different actions depending on what it is. If it's nothing that out of what we considered it to be, then we just say that, oh, wrong input, essentially. So let's try this out. Uh, I type some random stuff. You didn't pick any available animals. Yeah, makes sense. But if I do dog, boom, you picked a dog. So thing is, is this really the best way to do this? We're doing essentially the same action in every if statement. Uh, we're comparing a variable to its possible value, so... Bruh. It's kind of strange that we can't do it a better way, right? Well, yeah, right, because we actually can do it in a better way. Woohoo! I guessed correctly. Cool. Just made essentially Vim registers, but for the whole system, so... Still trying to get used to them. A switch. What is a switch? You can use it to compare a variable to its possible value, so exactly what we did just now. The cool thing about the switch statements is obviously that it looks a bit cleaner. You don't have as many if statements with all the brackets and all that stuff. Well, technically you don't have to have brackets if it's just a single line, uh, but nevertheless. and. An even cooler thing is that a switch is actually faster than an if statement. Well, if you just specify a single uh, if statement, if expression, then code, right? Obviously, that's going to be faster than a switch sta statement. But if all that you're doing is comparing a variable to its possible value, use a switch. Starting from like three possible cases, so maybe these two, and a default, so if it didn't match anything, switch will start to be faster than if, else if. And also looks cleaner. Why? Well, because let's look once again at the initial thing. In this else if, say in this one, and in the next one, and in the next one, we could put literally anything here. Uh, maybe if variable is bigger than something or smaller or essentially any operation on the variable. But in a switch statement, we, at least right now, we're not doing that, but we'll come back to that later. We're just comparing a variable to what it is. So that makes it faster. Right now you see me having the expression the same line, which also obviously reduces the amount of code or lines specifically that you need to have. And obviously don't measure the quality of your code by the amount of lines that it's written in. That's not really a good indicator, but it's nice to look at, which I think matters, at least to me. Well, we don't have to have it on a single line, we just create a new one and here we go. Then you can uh, add as many lines as you want. You might be inclined to use curly brackets because that makes sense, but HK does not make sense. So you actually can't use them uh, here. Imagine as if the closing bracket is just the next case or next default. By next, I mean the only one. You can't have more than one default in a switch statement. You can, though, put it literally anywhere and it will still function like you expect it to. There is one more thing in the initial version of all this. is the fact that we are using double equal signs. Well, in usual, in normal languages, <laughs> that is just a check for equality, but in HK you can just use one. So what's the difference? We are actually... Huh? We are actually checking uh, if the variable is this value, but also case sensitively. So if we type in horse in capital case, like in all caps, 
it won't be equal to this because double equals is case sensitive. So uh, we're not actually forgetting to do this here because surprisingly enough, a switch by default is case sensitive, which is weird because usually not a hotkey, everything is case insensitive, but I guess switch decided to be a switch. But don't worry, uh, this is the default, so you don't have to specify it, but you can specify off to turn off case sensitivity, and now it's case insensitive. Let's try this out by running the script. I do dog screaming at it, and still I picked a dog. When if I used on and screamed dog, that wouldn't work. And also, you don't have to use strange string notation like HK loves to a bit way too much, honestly. You can just use false, and that will work the same exact way. And I think it's kind of cleaner than having to know the specific string that works. Really ridiculous. There's one more thing. Uh, let's delete this for now and change this to sabaka, which is dog in Russian. Uh, so, actually I want to uh, be make it behave without taking case sensitivity in account. So, let's try this out. I'll type sabaka in uppercase and it doesn't work, even though uh, we specified false, meaning case insensitive. Well, the thing is, case insensitivity only works for English. Everything else, all the other languages, that's fucky. So you have to use locale. And now let's try this out. Uh, at least it's supposed to work. Boom, I picked a dog. Locale means essentially improving the case insensitivity to also account for other languages and their cases, I guess. Their uppercase and lowercase letters, if they even have those. But there's one thing that you have to keep in mind, it's the fact that locale is for all one to eight times slower than just leaving case Kane's case sensitivity to false. So it's going to be slower, but naturally, if you want to make something work, you just pick the way to make it work. And performance doesn't matter as much. And usually you won't notice a performance difference. We have been comparing a variable uh, to its possible values, but actually you can use a switch just like a normal if statement or other multiple of those where we type switch and then we actually leave the variable parameter empty. And then we can do, well, I'm just lying, actually I already typed this out, boom. So we can do any expression in a switch statement uh, if we leave the variable thing off, but Keep in mind that will be slower, but still has potential to be faster than if else. Yeah. Later on in the video, I'll show you a way to essentially use a switch without using a switch, but instead using a map. But that's for a different time. Here we're checking the value. <laughs> value three. Ah, yes. Let's try to run this. Boom, my value is positive. Great. What if it's negative? It is indeed negative. And it's, if it's zero, then it's zero. Great, we can actually use cases and the expression that are within them just like we would in if else. Uh, so I very much see you transferring many of your if else if into switches because they look quite a bit cleaner. And 
say you want to like if value is bigger than three then if something then some code so on so on so on you can actually just continue to use a switch statement and by creating a new one yes you can create a new switch statement in a case you can do anything you would in a normal function or anywhere really you can use all code including another switch that then has its own case uh, and default which by the way I don't think I mentioned is the else of the switch statement uh, and then you can continue on and on and on one thing you might have noticed is the annoying fact that it's not like you have to but it's a good idea to go further to the right in terms of indentation for every switch statement so we are six levels deep deep five yeah five um, because first we well let's start at this we make indentation for cases and then we make indentation for the code within them and then for the cases and then for the code within them once again so it can look a bit ugly if there are not enough cases to warrant increasing the indentation that much something to consider but it's completely up to you maybe this doesn't matter to you that's very viable because often if else if will look worse but actually for that I recommend using guard clauses which I have a video on remember the input box in our first um, example well say you have an input box which you use in something like this well obviously this is not an input box but has the same idea and then depending on the input it does different things well in my runner which is also a video that I made on and this is the runner I used to use a switch statement which goes on and on so if I typed on this then do some code else if I type this in do different code and then it continues on and on and on and on until it actually hits what I typed in and then does the correct thing this as you can imagine is not very efficient because the more commands you have the more time it will take to get to them okay maybe you leave the most uh, often used commands to the top but still that's a weird issue to have and essentially switch statements scale badly if you have something like 30 commands, which I definitely did, a switch might not be a good solution, which is why I don't use that solution. I use a map instead, a map of function objects that we then run on. And so even though I have quite a bit, this runs pretty much immediately. Well, maybe I don't have 30 here, but still a pretty hefty amount that we would have to go through and check. While switches would be faster for this than if else if, a map is even faster because maps in auto hotkey are actually O of log n. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. Essentially, uh, it's a binary search. So learn that, uh, learn that to understand why that's so much faster. And the way to run this is by the map the input that I put in and I just call the function object but more on that later in the later video on maps and function objects so keep a lookout for it I'm saying this not to say oh switches are useless even though I don't use them that often I really like using maps but a switch is actually a very good idea if you have quite a lot but not that many uh, potential cases this will usually look cleaner than 
if else if. So make sure to use it now from now on. And if you enjoyed this video, press a like, type some comment, maybe you have a question or a suggestion. Definitely subscribe. <laughs>